What is up, all you individuals out there? It's me, full-time anime man, and I am here with part nine of What If Deku Was an Ice Wolf. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Hope you all enjoy. We then reappear in a courtroom. Izuku and Shoto were sitting in their seats inside of everyone that was behind them of the courtroom. There were a few police officers and a few pro heroes standing nearby. In their, um, in the seated area of the public, there was the Todoroki fam family, Foyumi and Natsuo, alongside uh, the classroom of 1A, well, most of them, came in support of Izuku. Even All Might, Melissa, and her father came to support him. Izuku felt like everything was going to be alright. By the time came, the bailiff told everyone to rise for D Judge Judy. Everyone stands up and Judge Judy enters the room. You may all be seated, said Judy. Everyone sits down. And Judy says, all right, we are here for two cases in regards of the missing child of Enji Todoroki and Rei Todoroki. His name is Zuku Todoroki, and his involvement with his father's current state of condition and his involvement with the attack upon the USJ. Since NG is not here at the moment, we are going to start with the USJ attack. A person standing a few feet away stands up, a woman who is the prosecutor. She would go on to tell the judge about the reports of the USJ attack and Endeavor's condition and the kidnapping of and the kidnapping that Izuku took part in of the, his mother from the mental institution. Very interesting, said Judy. Okay, let's start with this in chronological order. We'll start with Endeavor's injury. Izuku Todoroki, I almost said Midoriya, do you, do you mind standing up please and telling us what happened? Izuku says, uh, yes, ma'am. He stands up, but before he could get started, Judy said, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on there? Why, why are you two holding hands? Uh, well, you see, ma'am, um, right after we defeated the League of Villains, um, I passed out and my brother took a hold of my hand here and we're kind of stuck like this. I hope that's okay. Judy thinks for a second and says, okay, that's fine. Just go ahead and tell us everything that happened. Iz Izuku goes on to explain what happened by the time he reached home and the first time he heard the parasite in his head. And to the part where Endeavor slapped his sister, Foyumi, in the face and she had done nothing to initiate this situation. And then I lost control of myself. Judy nods her head, saying, yeah, I understand. You were very angry to see your father do something so inhuman. I was looking through the notes of the detective, Alexander. You know about his quirk, yes? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, I do. Well, it shows here that he asked you if you attacked your father out of your own free will. And you said yes. And yet, he said that that was a lie. In other words, that thing inside your head made you do it. So, what do you think? Well, to be honest, ma'am, I, I thought that I was telling the truth, that I did attack my own father. But after hearing the results, I honestly don't know anymore. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have Detective Alexander come up here and explain it. Alexander would then step up to the post and would take the vow to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, Alexander, to the best of your abilities, may you please tell us how it is, how is it that you came to the conclusion that Izuku was lying about him attacking his father out of his own free will? Alexander then cleared his throat before he would talk. <clears throat> Well, Your Honor, I am able to read body functions, and there are about five of them that I mainly focus on to indicate a, a lie or the truth. And that is um, blood pressure, 
respiration, skin conductivity, and heart rate. When he was at, when I asked Izuku, when we asked Izuku if he attacked his father out of his own free will, so far, his brain and his blood pressure and respiration and skin conductivities were subtle. And I also thought that he was about to tell the truth about that. But then his heart rate started beating a little too fast. You see, vitals the vitals that I read are kind of like the jury, if you may. They all have to come to an agreement on a, on a subject, otherwise they can't move on. But if they can't, but if and if and if they can't, they just, give me give me this chew toy. Go play with it over there. <sighs> I think I just threw her chew toy in the dog bowl. Sorry. Oh man. Uh, let's just start over to where he's explaining what he reads. Okay. Uh, his blood pressure, respiration, and skin conductivities were subtle. And almost everything was showing signs of telling the truth. Except for his heart rate was being very fast. You see, the vitals that I read are kind of like the jury... They all have to come to an agreement in order to move on, but if they can't, nobody gets anywhere. You see, all the vitals that I mentioned earlier have to come to an agreement, and that is how I am able to see the truth. But if there's one vital that doesn't agree, then the rest then the rest there is a lot is a lie. So, in Izuku's case, his heart knew the truth, and therefore confessed for him. <sighs> Izuku was surprised what he was hearing. Judy says, hmm, very interesting. Thank you for explaining that to us. Alexander then steps off the post. And Judy continues the trial. Okay, so next is the unforeseen simulation joint. Well, well, actually, before we do that, tell me about the time with the League of Villains. Did they promise you anything? Did they threaten you or somebody you care about at one point? Tell me a little more about them. Izuku would go on to explain about his time with the League of Villains and all, for one, his time with the League of Villains and all for one. And what he told Izuku about his past. But he kept the secret about All Might and all for one knowing each other. And then, finally, he would tell her about the no moves. And their ability to bring them back to life. And he tells them to, to make sure that they stay dead is to either go for the head. Just like a zombie. Very, very interesting. Okay, now I know I said we'd go through this in chronological order. But I have to ask, why did you kidnap your mother from the institution? Izuku took a deep breath and said, well, because she didn't deserve to be there. Yes, she may have hurt one of her children, but that was because my father and Deborah mentally and physically abused her constantly. That day, she wasn't in her right state of mind, and I just thought it wasn't her fault. Izuku would go on to tell uh, the judge he was going to change his mind and just go say hi to her. But then the lady at the front desk recognized him and he freaked out and did what he did. Okay, now on to the USJ attack. To the best of your abilities, please tell us what happened. Izuku takes another inhale... 
I was trapped in my own body. The parasite had complete control over me. All I could do was watch it hurt and hunt down my brother. By the time we reached the end of the story, Judge Judy was hurt by his was hurt by what she was hearing and actually had plenty of sympathy for the young boy. And after a while going on over the notes, it was time to go to the evidence. A door opened, and what entered was a table with things on top of it. One of the things were Izuku's chains that were used in the attack of the USJ. And next to it was a small glass tube with a Q-tip and what appeared to be what was left of the black substance on it. Izuku, even seeing the littlest bit of it, kind of drove him to lose control of his breathing a bit, but he, regained, but he regained his composure. Shoto then asked him if he was okay, but Izuku just said, yeah, I'm fine, it's just the memories of that thing. On the piece of paper, the bailiff reads, so, after Izuku explained the whereabouts of this parasite, we were lucky enough to extract what was left of it. The forensic team examined this thing very closely, and they have discovered that this thing feeds off of despair, sadness, and depression from its hosts. It drives the host to make him or her see crazy things, or anything that has either made them sad or depressing to feed off of them. And it even communicates with its host to pressure them to do certain things that they would never do. We have called this the emotion vampire. And the thing that makes the emotion vampire is that it feeds mostly off of, as I have mentioned bef before, depression. The bailiff would explain that the emotion vampire could potentially take the body of its host if he or she reaches a high level of depression, that would only leave the body that was left, leaving the parasite to take complete control. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. So, Izuku, how did you manage to stop this emotional vampire? Kindness? I'm sorry? Kindness? I uh, use kindness to defeat it. See, I thought that the one thing that could make it stronger could possibly be the opposite that could take it out. So I forgave it and I managed to expel it from my body. Judy would then ask Izuku's attorney if he would like to bring up any evidence in defense of Izuku would then ask a couple of 1A students from UA to come to the stand and they would and he would ask them questions in regards if Izuku ever tried to hurt them they would all say no and if he and then he would ask them if Izuku actually saved their lives they would say yes and Kirishima would even go as far as to say heck yeah that guy was so awesome the way him and his brother tag team that monster, it was so manly. After all was said and done, Judy would say, okay, we're going to take a quick recess. The jury leaves the room, and so does Izuku and Shoto, who were placed in a room with barred up windows and security guards outside. The two boys would talk amongst each other. So, do you think that went well? asked Izuku. Yeah, I think it went fine. There's a big chance you might have the jury on your side. Izuku smiles and says, Man, where am I going to go when this is all over? Shoto was confused on what he just heard his brother say. He looked to Izuku and he said, You're going to come home with us, right? Izuku then jolted his shoulder and he flinched upwards saying, oh, Yeah, yeah, of course, of course I am. I'm sorry, it's just, I feel like I'm never going to get a break, that my mind is kind of just drifting away. Yeah, when this is all over, I'm definitely going to need a long winter's nap. Shoto says, yeah, I'm right with you on that. 
A moment of silence brushes by and Shoto says, You know, I have to ask. Do you want to be a hero? Yeah, I do, actually. After experiencing... After, <clears throat> after the experience with All for One, I want to stop people like him from wreaking havoc on the innocent people of Japan or anywhere in the world. More importantly, I must protect my family, the only one that I got left. Suddenly, the doors to the room open and All Might emerges from it. Uh, uh, All Might, said Izuku. He then entered the room and shut the door. Hello there, young Todoroki. Izuku says, S hey, S so did you find the bar in All for One? No, unfortunately they fled before we could get there. <sighs> Damn it, said Izuku. It's going to be fine. We'll catch up with them somehow. Well, I do hope so. All Might takes a short exhale and he says, Listen, young Todoroki, after hearing the complete story of your encounterment with All for One, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of you for being strong mentally and physically. He put you through a lot, and at the end, you came out on top and you were victorious. That's some very impressive skills you got there. Thank you, All Might. And if I am proven not guilty, there is something big that I would like to ask you. Oh, well, okay, but why not just ask me now? Well, just in case that the jury finds me guilty, I... I just don't want to get my hopes up. No, I see. Very well. I better return to my seat. The jury should reach a verdict any minute now. You boys stay stay cool out there. Both of the boys then nod their heads. He then closes the door and the boys were left alone once again. And Shoto says, what were you going to ask him? Izuku looks over to him, and then we fade to black, and then reappear back into the courtroom. Everyone had just returned to their seats, so did Izuku and Shoto, and soon Judge Judy, then... And then, and then the jury, <laughs> excuse me, take their seats as well. Judy speaks, so... After an hour of going over everything, has the jury reached a verdict? One of the juries then stand up and says, We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Izuku Todoroki. And that is the end of What If Deku Was a Ice Wolf Part 9. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this story. And if you made it to the end of this video, consider yourselves hashtag blessed. And I hope you all have a nice day. Goodbye.